r slash ask reddit reddit when has something you've always done just in case paid off i don't believe other drivers turn signals until the driver slows to make their turn three or four times in 40 years this has saved me from pulling out in front of someone who would have t-boned me my wife started planning a very expensive very exotic trip a year in advance we planned every other weekend made payments set up things for my business and got almost all of it paid off ahead of time the day before we were supposed to leave she went to the hospital for an emergency appendectomy trip cancelled hours before we were supposed to be on the airplane tears were shed she went through all the stages of mourning a few months prior she asked me if we should get trip insurance i was pretty mad but she's the cautious type in the end we got virtually all our money back save the cost of the insurance and we will be taking our trip in two months as though nothing had happened tld our wife got appendicitis the day before hugely expensive trip but had trip insurance to cover it was planning a trip with gf to cancun for a week kept checking weather slash hurricane reports for weeks leading up and had to cancel two days before we left because of what ended up being hurricane harvey thank goodness she insisted on the trip insurance took pictures of a job i did the client was an a-hole and i was pretty sure he would try to duck me over later in the day i got a call from my office asking about the job sure enough the client called my boss and claimed that i did not do the job and had photo evidence he was refusing to pay the bill i responded that the client can go duck himself then emailed my boss several of the before and after pictures i had discreetly taken one in particular that had the client in shot checking on me great job there was my boss's response i constantly pat my pockets to make sure i have my keys wallet etc several times it saved me from locking myself out of my apartment i have always driven cars with manual locks used to lock myself out all the time now my rule is keys in the hand and i look at the keys before i lock the door never lock them in again several years ago my 2008 ford ranger died and wouldn't start again after i got it towed to the dealership they confirmed that my engine was completely shot don't i have warranty i asked desperately let's see oh it looks like your warranty expired eight days ago the lady at the desk told me oh for far wait it looks like you did pay for the extended powertrain warranty when you bought it i guess it is totally covered oh thank christ having a tow strap in my car $40 investment has probably saved me 10x that in towing fees. When I slide off the road in the winter, I hook my car up and then stand on the side of the road with the other end in my hand. Turns out people with big trucks really like to show off how powerful their trucks are. Looking both ways down a one way street. Similarly, at crossings waiting for the light to turn green, then still looking before crossing. Probably saved my life a few weeks back with some maniac speeding to get through the light stuck that person. I mean that's in silly. I always pull slash push on a door after locking it. Lucky me, a few weeks ago, I did this, and the door swung wide open. Door frame gave away where the bolt goes. So I went back inside, locked the dead bolt, went out the other door, and then made a request to have it fixed. Had I not been testing, my door would've been left unlocked. And thanks to our uneven ground, the door swings open by itself. So it would have made its way open, and stayed open, while I was out for 12 hours. When you travel, bring one roll of toilet paper in the suitcase, just in case. Last holiday was at an apartment rented through Airbnb and we did not have a car. We were dropped off by a taxi late afternoon and there was no grocery stores anywhere nearby. After one bad experience with a stomach bug I always leave a roll of toilet paper in the car for emergencies. This later saved me in the bushes, after pulling over to make a run for it. Before I start traveling on my motorcycle, I make sure my pockets are zipped and top box shut. Seven times. And then extra at the stoplight slash along straight. Two times I've noticed I haven't done my helmet strap through vigorous checking haven't crashed. But if I did I'd probably not be a virgin due to how fucked I'd been. I guess buying premium health insurance. Parents kinda just convinced me to keep my insurance and to use it for the extra benefits like opto and dental. 
had stomach cramps one day, was sent to the ER, did an MRI and ultrasound, no causals and fixed with an fourth drip. Special note at the bottom, please refer to urologist, kidney is shaped abnormally. Next minute, staged to kidney cancer, and within a week, had open surgery and kidney removed. I only paid to KXS for my insurance, but the procedure was worth 45k. Some of it was comfort, since it was a private hospital. Private room, personal attending nurse 24, 7, 5 course meals, that I didn't eat at all, discovered the joys of jello, and rehab. I was only 24 years old. I always leave early to get to work, because you never know about traffic. Almost all of the time it just means that I get to work early. However, a few times traffic or road construction, etc. has slowed me down, but in all the years I've ever worked there I've never been late. Cutting it close, yes, but never have I been late. Always crane my head around and check my blind spots before changing lanes. I've been surprised to see a car hiding there many a time. Aren't drivers supposed to do this? Yet shockingly people don't do the rational and safe thing, because it requires a half calorie of muscle exertion and a bare moment of attentiveness to turn their freaking heads and look. I always kick my shoes before I put them on to scare out any critters that might be inside. Pretty unusual habit for my area. One morning I kicked my work shoe and a half dollar sized monster that looks like it could have been the spider that ate Frodo came running out of my shoe. I cringe thinking about what that unexpected, pokey, squishy, wiggly crunch would have felt like beneath my socked foot. Hey you'll hate this story. About 20 years ago my dad left his shoes in the back of the closet for about a month. The next time he goes to put on those shoes, there's something there. He thinks it's a stick, so he knocks the heel on the ground a bit, but nothing fell out. He tries to put it on again. Same stick feeling, still no clue what it was. So he gets a flashlight and looks, and, big surprise, there's a spider there. So now, instead of doing the normal thing getting a spider bite checked out, he ignored that it happened, and decides to go make some lunch. Apparently about 2 hours later he calls my mom, who's working as a pharmacist in the nearby hospital, instead of an ambulance. He says, hey, so a spider bit me earlier and now my leg is swelling up really bad, and I'm having trouble breathing. Not even sounding particularly worried. Of course, he gets to the hospital, and do you want to know what bit him? A black widow. Twice. Want to know the worst part? They were out of antivenin, so they had to fly some in from three counties over. If he had waited another half an hour to call, he'd be dead. So yeah, I always check my shoes before I put them on too. When I lived in Tennessee I always used to park maybe a hundred yards or so further away from my workplace in a different lot, so I could be on high ground. The normal parking lot was really close to a creek that swelled and got really turbulent every time it rained. My co-worker said I was paranoid, worrying about flooding. One day we had a big storm and the lot flooded. Two of my co-workers cars were destroyed. The cars were half submerged. Honk before I reverse a vehicle. At least once a kid has ran away from the back of my car. On my work software there is a tiny little field where I can put in about 50 characters worth of notes before I finish an application on a client account. Hardly anyone ever uses it, and I cannot fathom why. I have noted receipt numbers, major purchase orders, cost agreements, all kinds of stuff, and it has saved my butt. Every now and then a new person takes over an existing account, and they audit it. Without fail I will get them at my office demanding to know why certain transaction slash payments were made, the notes back me up every single time. One lady wanted me to personally reimburse her for nearly dollar sign 30k worth of camera equipment. Check notes. Found original purchase order. It was her damn signature on the receipt. Suck it. There was one of those dog tag engraver machines at Walmart. You could get a dog tag for like 8 bucks or something pretty cheap. My mom said we didn't need one for our puppy because he's always at home, but I convinced her anyway. We engraved this cool American flag looking one and came home and put it on him. Next week he gets hit by a car, escaped from a friend's house we were visiting. Some passerby managed to pull him to the side of the road and called my mom's cell. He's a Darkson for size reference. We were at Olive Garden, but she ran out and drove to where he was to pick him up. 
he was in the passenger seat bleeding and non-stop crying, was so sad to watch. Multiple surgeries and $8,000 later, he's doing fine. If we didn't get that dog tag, he wouldn't have been alive today. This was about 10 plus years ago. I have to approve certain things at work. There's a rule you can set to forward your approvals to someone which you set when you're on vacation. For 8 years, I always set the rule to forward them for a day longer than I was going to be on vacation just in case something happened. You can take this off as soon as you get back. Two times this year my flights were cancelled coming home and I couldn't get out until the next day and it saved me and my employees a giant pain in the butt. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe.